You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. It is hot, it is sizzling, and I'm not talking about beach bodies. No, 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 I am talking about the air temperature. And as the United States actually officially goes through the hottest six month period that we have ever had on record, at least that's what our uh, meteorologist said this morning uh, on our local news. So chances, right. chances are it's wrong. <laughs> but, <laughs> They're usually right with historical anyway, data. Yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, but I my, should have been a weatherman. <laughs> But anyway, um, as you know, this can really affect our job. Uh, it can affect you as a person, not only in acute fatigue, but in chronic fatigue as well. If you're uh, if you're working a lot on the roads, it's hot out there. As as someone who has filmed uh, very large ranches, I've actually had to be on uh, on location for days on end in the middle of nowhere. Uh, even sometimes two or three hours away from the hotel that was hours away from uh, the airport or, or our house. So I understand how heat can affect you as the pilot, which I think is something that's overlooked a lot as aeronautical decision making wasn't really a priority with the FAA and the uh, Part 107 test. That being said, it can also affect your equipment. And I don't think people really understand the brevity in which, uh, uh, or the brevity of the malice uh, and the consequences. Gosh, that was a terrible sentence. Long <laughs> and the short of it is, is that the heat can really, really, really screw you up as a drone pilot. I will just be honest, over the life of my career, mm -hmm. I have realized that watching a pilot operate in the heat for more than three batteries is actually one of the best gauges to see how experienced the drone pilot is. Hmm. And I'm not going to say who it was because it would crush their heart and that's not my intention, but we flew with someone in Arizona once and someone who lived in the Southwest and I was like, oh, these guys are, these guys are used to being out here. I won't have to like help them at all, you hmm. know? That was not the case. You can tell that those pilots had only flown one or two batteries tops on a super hot day. They they hadn't actually been uh, forced to work on a super hot day. And then I got schooled on a super hot day months later as we had to go to the Arizona desert in Gila Bend um, to, f to film the solar mm, class, which is yeah. live now for members. So the... Uh, uh, how do you call it? I think the technical term is thermographic photogrammetry. Hmm. We should just call it's the class, class, we should call the class drone thermographic photogrammetry instead of solar inspection with drones. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with B. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> um, anyway, long and the short of it is, is the heat can really cause numerous issues, even to the extent of failure on your job. Now, obviously your tablet can overheat, you guys have all had that issue before, but we now know, thanks to PJ, that essentially if the humidity is at a certain point and the temperature or the real feel is at 105, we actually have enough data, because it's happened to my drones now too, um, that these sensors on the phantoms will fail at a certain temperature. Hmm. And we actually, I knew from DJI with the Inspire 1 to never fly the Inspire 1 over 107 degrees. Uh, and that was actually a direct piece of advice from Eric Chang at the time. Huh. He's like, hey, I see you flying a lot around boats and I would feel awful if this happened to you. So just know X. And I was like, oh. Cool. Good to, good to know. And then I had that issue flying in Las Vegas that actually when I met Anthony Cools and uh, Nick Lang and all of them, I had that very issue with my Inspire 1. Hmm. So um, long and the short of it is, let's get to the question. But look, this is something that seems easy to solve, but you are not really going to understand how important it is to create these habits to avoid heat um, until you've had one of your jobs shut down because... Until it's too late. Uh -huh, until you were incessantly worried about how much shade was on your tablet at all times because that's almost the degree at which you have to operate here in the southwest and in texas as well hi guys my name's todd i live out here in ohio near the great lakes and i actually had 
two questions I was hoping you could answer. My first is, with all the heat going on right now, you know, I know you guys have talked about this before, but I was wondering if you could give an updated refresher on do's and don'ts and flying in the heat, especially for those of us who have to uh, do jobs out in the heat where our time is dictated by our clients. My second question is uh, living near the Great Lakes, one of my favorite things to film or photograph in my off time is uh, some of the big cargo ships out here. They're just really cool. Everyone is a little different. And I've actually, you know, I usually get waves from some of the crew that are on the ships. You know, they don't seem to really mind it. But my concern is that, like with trains, are cargo ships considered critical infrastructure? You know, I never fly over them, you know, because just for common sense and safety. But uh, that's something I've always wondered. And I was wondering if you could shed some light on that. Anyway, guys, uh, I always enjoy your shows and uh, just keep up the great work. Take care. Bye. (laughs) Thank you, Todd. Um, I like the dual question approach. Very efficient. And so definitely we'll get into the cargo ship thing. But as far as heat, I mean, what do you think? Just give people a quick list of the sort of the primary things they might need to consider um, when flying in heat. And I think also probably needs to be said that what we even mean by heat is different, right? Because 90 degrees where he's at could be super, super hot because of the humidity in terms of what it does to you versus out here. The last few days were 103. And it's funny, I was outside and I just went out into the front yard, saw some weeds and spent like five minutes pulling them. And a a couple drove by in their car and the the little lady had her window down, which I don't know why that was, but she said, it's too hot for that. (laughs) I was like, thanks for the tip. I don't know. (laughs) But, uh, point was i wasn't gonna die um and it was fine so she responded with opinions are the cheapest commodity in the world <laughs> yeah that's uh here we are giving our opinion yeah <laughs> irony <No> <laughs> anyway. um, but anyways it, it is definitely a factor obviously when it comes to flying and being so outside. is so is you pulling weeds <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm sorry. It's a factor of the story, but it's just a funny factor. Yeah. The fact that I, I can't get over it. Someone would actually like go out of their way to tell you to not pull weeds. This is kind of hilarious. Yeah, I, you know, she's probably just sharing some concern. You're going to overwork yourself, honey. <laughs> she meant well, I'm sure. She did. She did. She was a sweet lady. Uh, the heat. First thing is be prepared. This means, and this means different things depending on where you live, because Rod just hit it on the head. Like here, we have to worry about direct sunlight. 100 degrees in Albuquerque, which is actually really unusual, by the way. Uh, It typically doesn't get that hot here. Uh, In fact, whenever I tell people about Albuquerque, I'm like, eh, what do you think of the Southwest? And I was like, cool, that's not us. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> At least not it, this part You're of the describing Southwest. Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a reason no one's heard of us. No, anyway, um, my point uh, here is that we have to worry about direct sunlight, whereas uh, in humid areas, you have to worry about direct sunlight and just relative temperature. So for me, I'm always worried about where is my phone? Where is my tablet? What's my backup? And are they in the shade? But I mentioned that the first point is being prepared. And what do I mean about being prepared is that if you are in the desert Southwest, you know, charging all your stuff in a cool area, keeping all your stuff in a cool area. I never leave my equipment in my vehicle overnight. I want that in an air conditioned room because if the case is cold and the foam is cold, then that means it's going to take longer for those batteries to heat up in my case that's getting, you know, heat from the sun. Um, So step number one is being prepared. And that means your equipment is always in its case. It's always cold. You're charging things properly and you're storing them in a cold area too. You're not just storing them uh, in your vehicle. When I say be prepared, this also means that, well, one of the things that we always have in our vehicles is a cooler full of water. Um, We also carry life straws with us, though. Those are really important because if you ever run out of water and you run into a spring and people are like, yeah, but how often are you going to run into a spring? 
don't tell me about how often running into springs until you have to film a quarter of a million acre farm and then run into a spring in the middle of the desert southwest. <laughs> and you're like, there's really water right here. <laughs> you remember I ate lunch there that one day? I was yeah. like so stunned that there was water in the middle of that. Um, but you can run into a spring. My point of this is being prepared, right? You, you've got to have water. You've got to have a way to stay cool. Um, and you've got to have redundancy. As a drone pilot, you have to have redundancy. So for me, thanks to PJ, I actually have that King Camp tent that I put on my truck whenever I'm in super hot days. Got to have shade. Yeah. And that's it's not really a tent. It's just like the top half of a tent. Yeah. It, it attaches to your vehicle and then it attaches to two points on the ground wherever you are. What I love about it is that it has a clear roof. So if you need to continue to have visual line of sight, you know, with your drone, uh, you can do that. And If you need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, cooler... Um, I, this whole Yeti thing made me go down the rabbit hole because I don't care if it's an American company or not. If you're price gouging people, I'm not going to support you. So, so what did I did is I supported another American company <laughs> and bought the same thing for half the price. Uh, anyway, um, those coolers that they have at Cabela's, they're the same thing as mono price, which is the same thing as Yeti. And honestly, I, I'm not sure I would even recommend it because the Igloo cooler that they have now mm -hmm. where they've like beefed up and they call it the extreme cooler it's just as good and it's one fifth the price so get a cooler with wheels so you can sit on it have your drinks and put cold stuff in it um the but don't but don't stop drinking water like because it, by the time you're dehydrated it's too late it's too late it, agreed agreed in fact uh howell's simple rule which is kind of funny and childish is so true if you're not peeing you're getting dehydrated like yeah. literally, if you don't have the urge to pee over a two or three hour period, something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that's the way to think about it. So always be drinking water. Couldn't agree with you more. I'm a very, I'm a stickler about what kind of water. I also don't leave uh, like packages of water bottles in my car over time and then drink them. If that happens, I end up feeding it to the plants. You will get cancer. That, that's a fact. Um, so uh, let's see, being prepared, you know, get that tent. All this stuff we just shot for one of our classes. Like we just redid operations and, uh, and we just experienced exactly what we're talking. I mean, it was what probably mid nineties up in Colorado during the day. It was, but we were at eight thousand feet. Yeah. So that's like it being a hundred and ten at zero elevation. I would even argue 120 because it took me like a few, it took multiple days to have the feeling of energy come back. Yeah. So obviously lots of sunscreen, wear wide brimmed hats if you have them. I mean, it's common sense. I mean, it's, I don't think there's anything unusual probably, right? You want to, what about some people I know, they'll actually store batteries in a cooler and maybe put some of the, not, not ice obviously, but some of those, um, whatever those cooling mechanisms are. I mean, it's yeah, contained not, ice or something. You think yeah. that, that you don't think that's necessary? Um, I, it really depends, you know, because the, the, the situation really dictates it all. But I mean, what I love is in our mobile kit, we talked about DeWalt's new system of uh, mobile storage, and it's actually what we use now here. And I don't know if you noticed this, but I bought the cooler. Um, because I did not notice it. They, the reason I bought the cooler as a part of the storage is because this is a modular system that you can literally like, you know, make Legos out mm -hmm. of. And it's a pretty cool system. It really is. I bought that cooler because of what happened last week. Because last week was the first week that I didn't have cases of water with me. Mm -hmm. I trusted you. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Which I brought. <laughs> he did bring them. But Just a day late. <laughs> what I meant to say, though, is that it was outside of my routine. And yeah. it was outside of my system. And now I understand what Tim and you meant by that mm -hmm. in the first two years of doing business with you. You're just outside of the system. And I'm like, that's no big deal. And now I'm like, you're outside of the system. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Whatever. Yeah, you live and you learn. Thanks for your patience, Rob. <laughs> uh, but I mean, okay, succinct list. Look, man, it's going to be really hot. You need to start thinking like a lawyer. That means what happens if the worst of the worst happens, okay? I honestly think everyone should think like a lawyer. Um, so that being said, you need a cooler. You need water. You need redundancy. You need a way to filter water. You need a tent. You need to make sure that at all times your tablets, and I mean all times, your remote, your phone, your iPad, or whatever your backup tablet is, they are not in direct sunlight. Literally, I watched someone at a shoot one time leave their remote and their monitor on a table for m maybe five minutes. 
Well, and on that point, you have to be careful because you could set it in the shade and not be paying attention that the sun is right here. And then 20 minutes later, you've walked away to go do something. And 20 minutes later, you're in the sun. I've watched that happen numerous times. Me too. <laughs> Especially with students. Like yeah. people, a lot of people come to my classes and they're like, I always hear you on the radio and think like, man, he's on it, but he's a little strict. He's got like his, his bar is set pretty high. Well, you want to know why? Because I have learned the hard way. Yeah. I have gone through the failures. If you're smart, you won't have to go through those failures too. Absolutely. You can just learn from other people's failures. I've failed a lot, and I'm freaking proud of that. <laughs> yeah. I, mm, you ain't failing, you ain't trying. That's exactly right. I would rather live with the failure than live with the regret of not trying. Anyway, back to the list. Direct sunlight is key. The tent is key. Um, I have a dual air conditioner in my truck. Uh, I'm just lucky that way. That has really nothing to do with it. Um, I would say the other thing, you know, this goes back to like fundamentals. It's like rules of geniuses. Um, living in the South, I grew up wearing undershirts all the time. And that's why I like those fishing shirts is because it reminds me of polos, which is what I had to wear in private school for the vast majority of my schooling. But they're really comfortable and I always stay cool. And a lot of people in the West don't wear undershirts. I've noticed that a lot. So even what you wear is going to determine how you feel. Yeah. Um, I would say another hack that really helps me. Oh, what are the name of those things? Uh, liquid IV. Hoel does not like them because he's like, that's chemicals. But liquid IV is my saving grace because you drink a glass of water, throw a liquid IV in a water, and then drink another water. And I don't care how drunk you are, but you ain't getting no hangover. <laughs> oh, you Wait didn't see that minute. one coming. <laughs> oh, now you know how I learned about liquid IV. Uh, but no, they're awesome. You're like, I got to find a solution. <laughs> hangover suck. Um, but no, those are awesome. I, I think really the key is just habits. I mean, look, the answer to the question is you have to set up habits. Habits to have redundancy, have water on hand, to have one of those little towels. We give these at every fly-in, by the way. Every person gets a little towel. What are those? called you know it's like a chamois I know what you're talking about yeah like a cool cooling towel or something I don't know the formal name is there a like, formal name I, I'm sure that there is a formal name but it's definitely not as cool as sham wow like you know like everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say sham wow sham wow right you just think you know purple towel uh, TV commercial wow you know like literally that's what just came to mind hopefully I think they're just called cooling towels um, I would just call them cool wow <laughs> But that's probably already trademarked. So, uh, <laughs> but these towels, they really keep you cool as they keep your neck cool. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of uh, male, male people walking around Albuquerque with those around, which is smart. Yeah, it is smart. Very smart. The other thing I think is, uh, you know, going back to the succinct list, I don't have one in here. But do you remember how I used to wear those, uh, those hats? And they're kind of like... Um, Indiana Jones style hats. Yeah, that's exactly. Absolutely. I have a lot of those and I still wear them because those are the best, especially when you're in Florida to get shade on the neck and just around your, uh, your head. Like if, if you guys ever see the footage, whenever it comes out from 2016, that safari trip, like it literally looked like Steve Irwin. <laughs> uh, we got it. I don't think I've seen this. And uh, you know, it makes me think too of sunglasses. You really need a good pair of sunglasses because it literally, I mean, I've been out when I don't have sunglasses and it, I mean, my eyes burn I can't, at the I, end of the day. I, yeah, I can't go anywhere in New Mexico without them. But you bring up a good point. This is why the show could just go on forever, right? What's the white balance of the tint on your polarized glasses? Mm -hmm. Every time I go to Oakley, I'm like, oh, those look sick. Then I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I look at my screen with my glasses on sometimes. What's the white balance? So now I make sure that I always have a neutral white balance whenever I buy polarized mm. glasses. Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to find those lenses at an Oakley store? It's like the secret thing. That I didn't know that a lot of people know about Oakley. Interesting. And they're called the Prism Neutrals. Oh. Mm hmm. Interesting. There yeah, you I know it. that you know them because you you see me every day with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Prism Neutrals. Man, right. we could just go down the rabbit hole. Sun bum, sunscreen, bug spray. Like, I have a whole mobile Lip kit. Bomb. Whole mobile kit. It's in our class. Check it out on that bombshell. I can't go anymore because I could sit here for four hours and go down the list of how to be prepared. It comes down to habits. In the shade, cool, stay hydrated. Need a new article on this. By the way, but we're going to answer a second question really quick about mm. 
flying the cargo ships, right? I don't think it's an issue. Short answer. Was that a part of this question? Yep. Oh. That was part two. Oh, my bad. Remember he's up in Lake near Lake Michigan, I think, or the Great Lakes. I don't remember. Maybe it was Lake Michigan. Warships are a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he said... Any military ship, you cannot fly within a certain radius of that ship. I do not know the radius, though. Uh, I act... Well, and he wasn't talking about warships. No, I know. I just want to make sure that's clear. Oh, okay, okay. So anyways, if you go to uh, CISA.gov, you can see the identity of the critical infrastructure and the 16 categories and what that includes. And there's one here... Um, transportation system sector so I'm just checking that out and then sector overview and I don't see anything it includes aviation highway motor maritime transportation mass transit pipeline freight postal and shipping so I think a uh, quick answer on your um, on your cargo ships is, is that you're fine and uh, I don't see an issue with it somebody correct me if we're wrong yeah I mean I don't see what it hurts. Something that you should be worried about flying around cargo ships is that look how much steel mm -hmm. is on the boat. Sure. Got to be aware of that. How big do you think that magnetic interference bubble is around that thing? Yeah. And so how it, close could he get? Just say with a... I'm not giving that answer. Hell no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm not touching that. That is like danger, danger, danger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> well, you could say one mile. <laughs> Ten miles. <laughs> well, apparently he's been flying and getting waves and nothing's happened so yet. So let me so. put it to you this way. I'm, I've been on one of those ships. They're enormous. It's like a 30-story building. Like they they're are huge. enormous. Absolutely. I wouldn't fly within a half mile of that thing. Hmm. Well, and no offense, they don't look cool enough to me, but that's a personal thing. Well, but you know? but they could like I don't I don't know. We don't need to go down that mm. that rabbit trail. Um, Todd, in terms of critical infrastructure, it appears you're fine. Beyond that, apparently you're on your own. Uh, and we are not <laughs> lawyers, nor do we pretend to be. And this is not considered legal advice. Not even close. I like giving disclaimers though. I, nowadays, in particular, <laughs> disclaimers should just say we know you're gonna not read this. And uh, terms and conditions, uh, you're probably going to sue us anyway. So uh, just wave that right by clicking OK. And uh, just know that you're screwed. <laughs> One of us is screwed. <laughs> and we're going to do everything we can to make sure it's not us. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> anyway, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, as much as we did because that was a rant. That, that, was, that was not Indeed. structured. But yeah, thanks for letting us do this. It's, it's pretty cool. I enjoy it. I know you do. For everyone out there, um, if you want to, uh, with everyone who's seen what's going on, we see downloads, so we know what's going on. We know who sees what's going on. I would ask that, you know, typically at the end of a show, I'd be like, hey, leave us a review so other people can find us. If, uh, if you found value, uh, help other people find the value by, you know, sharing or leaving a review. If any of you have learned something from Rob. If you, uh, Rob. if you like Rob, if you like his leadership style, um, if you think that he is just a damn good-hearted individual, <laughs> whatever. There maybe, better be a lot of freaking whatever he's about to say. <laughs> maybe Kidding. you like the shine on his dome. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever it is, just know that um, while I do appreciate a lot of the um, positive feedback that we have gotten in the last week, I really do appreciate it. It's, it's, that's my fuel, just so you know. But it's time to fill up another tank, uh, and it's not mine. So if you have something nice to say, if you're grateful for the show, if you're grateful for Rob, uh, anything, I want you to email and say something, even if it's just like, hey, Rob, Love you, buddy. Keep the hard work up. We appreciate it, right? Or even if it's just like, love you, THX, right? But it's like L-U-V and then the letter U because you're just like way too lazy to write out the sentence. We would love that too. But just send it to Rob <laughs> at thedroneu.com. Beggars can't be choosers. Like. Mm -mm. And he didn't ask for this, by the way. This is just God, like no. all on the fly. <laughs> I'm doing this and I'm probably embarrassing him. I'm sorry. Um, but everyone has their fuel. Everyone gets their motivation and inspiration somewhere. And... Uh, I would just ask all of you from the bottom of my heart, let's, uh, let's fuel up Rob. So he doesn't need it, but I'm just saying, why not? Why not just uh, put a little more positivity in this world? It's full of the negative. I am for that. That bombshell. Thank you. <laughs>